the Beal Grandmaster tournament reached a dramatic finale. Two players were sharing the lead going into the final round. That was Ho Yi Fan and Pentala Hari Krishna with three players just a half point behind them. So incredibly close. First of all, let's look at the game between Pentala Hari Krishna and Etienne Bako. Reached this position after 19 moves where you can see that White has this very nice knight on f5 supported by its comrade here with the queen on an active square but this bishop pins and that's a little bit annoying. I mean we were looking at things like h4 trying to dislodge this knight but well black should be okay in these kind of positions. Hare Krishna played bishop e3 to block out the bishop on a7 but well, Bacro played very ambitiously here. He played bishop to b8 instead of trading. And this was an excellent move. And already he felt as though things were turning in his favour. And he assessed the position quite correctly. Well, we were looking at moves like bishop d4, which looks very dangerous indeed. Setting up threats here and... You know, maybe maybe a sec second knight coming in. You've got to watch this, of course. Um, but maybe the queen moving, and and then trying to get um, an attack on g7. But off to c5, in fact, a very simple move, and that is c5. Um, yeah, c5, attacking the bishop, and if bishop takes pawn. Then we take on f5. Now, knight takes allows a very nasty check. So after queen takes, then you can just take this off and actually the king is safe, followed by queen h2 if possible. So bishop d4, this move which we thought was quite menacing, doesn't work. So in fact, here white should compromise and just bring the queen back and well, back row felt he was already slightly better here with the two bishops. But instead, Hare Krishna played the move bishop c5, which is very unfortunate. I don't know whether he was tired at the end of the tournament. Maybe the, the, the 11 o'clock morning start had an effect on him. But this is a blunder that loses very swiftly. Bishop takes knight. He'd simply overlook that queen takes bishop can be by rook d5, forking queen and bishop, no way out. He played knight takes, but this allowed queen h2 check, and now this is a mating attack. Preventing the king escaping, so that's mate on h1. f4, allowing the bishop to, to come back. That's a clever move. Deflecting the queen to a worse square. So obviously if queen takes pawn, queen, queen takes mate. So the queen comes here, check, bishop a7, threatening queen takes bishop mate, there's no other move, um, if instead knight here, well you can choose how you want to win, but um, I think knight h4 is incredibly strong, followed by taking here. But rook e3 happened, blocking, but this was taken. And now rook e8, this is incredibly simple. Black is just the exchange up and with a continuing attack. And here, Hare Krishna resigned. A very unfortunate finish to the tournament for him because he'd, he'd played extremely well in this tournament. Um, so that left Etienne Bako, the first to finish, with six points. But Ho Yi Fan who was on five and a half before the round started, or uh, G Nico Giorgiadis and others could catch up. So let's go to their game. Ho Yi Fan against Nico Giorgiadis. That's the final position. I don't want to look at that. I want to look at this position. Well, actually, after Nico's next move, A5, excellent move. Making this knight on a3 look a little bit silly. Um, I felt 
that he was already doing well. He has the two bishops. He has a nice pawn center. Ifan has to bring this knight back into play, but bishop a6, I think, was a very strong move. And, well, let's say b3. Bishop here. Um, probably white has to duck out of this pin. But, well, you don't have to trade, but you could very simply, and just castles. And it's quite clear that white, with his damaged, with her damaged pawn structure, I should say, is, is worse in this position. Very pleasant position for black. But Nico was concerned about some kind of attack with knight h4, but really, I think this is quite a forlorn uh, exercise. I mean, maybe just g6, but... It looks rather dubious to, to play for this kind of attack while, while there's this unpleasant pin going on. Said Nico played bishop e7, obviously preventing that. But after bishop e3, this is already not quite as clear as one would wish. Probably the best idea is to give a pawn with knight e6. And then bishop takes and let's say knight f4 and just castle here and for the pawn black has pretty good compensation two bishops potentially mobile center and counterplay on these a and b files white could also play instead maybe to try and take a bit of the sting out of black's position to play knight b6 and then just take that bishop, although in this position, well, probably white is okay, um, but black with the, the extra center pawn, I think, is better. Instead, the game went bishop e3, now bishop a6, and after taking on c5, really only one player can be better with this damaged pawn structure and the healthy knight on c4. White is, of course, better here. I thought Ifan should play queen d3 here, actually, to put the, the queen on c3. Maybe it doesn't make so much difference. Anyway, she played rook d2, and the rooks got traded. White still has a big positional advantage here. Here, Nico just blundered. He thought for 16 minutes, and after queen b4, knight takes pawn, this was simply winning for white. But instead, bishop f6 is a better move. And now, well, we can get some funny positions after, let's say, g3, um, like this, to trade the queens and, and try to take this off. Maybe white is winning. It's, it's very hard to say. You know, we can perhaps maneuver the knights around here, play c5. Um, it's tricky. Perhaps black has a blockade. There are other ways to play this as well if we go back. White could also play, let's say, h4. And we reach some kind of ending like this, where, you know, we can try and attack these pawns. That's something like this. Perhaps black has better chances of a blockade in this one, uh, because it's impossible for white to break through on the queen side. Nevertheless, this is kind of nerve-jangling to play like this for black. You know, maybe the knight comes here, you try and break on, on the king's side like this. It's not guaranteed a draw, but this would certainly be Bach's best chance to play bishop f6 and just sit tight, but highly unpleasant. Instead, as I said, white took a pawn, and now this is very, very easy. Here, really, black, black can do absolutely nothing. Um, you know, white can build up very, very patiently. There's already a threat to take on d4. In the game, this happened, and, well, Nico resigned in this position. Here, this makes a massive difference, because basically we play knight d3, and it's like we're playing a king and pawn endgame with an extra pawn on the king side. Very, very simple win. So there we are. That concludes our... Beale Grandmaster Tournament. So Ho Yifan is the winner with six and a half points. 
Etienne Bakrou was clear second with six. Pantal Hari Krishna clear third with five and a half. And, well, we're still waiting for one game to finish as I'm doing this recording, actually. Um, if Alexander Morozevich succeeds in drawing against Peter Lecker, he will actually draw level with Hari Krishna in third position. But we can see the final standings there. This has been a superb tournament in all respects, very entertaining. And I think a tremendous achievement for Ho Ifan winning clear with clear uh, clear first place. Um, she's making great strides in the chess world, playing more elite tournaments. And it seems to me she's a far more mature player than when I've seen her before. So we await with interest how she makes progress in the chess world. Don't forget, next year, the, the 51st Beale Chess Festival will be taking place and the dates are already confirmed, 21st of July to the 1st of August. So if you're interested in playing, there are lots of amateur tournaments, lots of professional tournaments. It's a fantastic festival and a wonderful setting here in Switzerland. Thanks for watching.